I guess that means everybody's doing all right this evening, right? Welcome to the show, Emerald Lugasi here on Emerald Live. We got a great show for you tonight. You're not going to believe it. Oh, so excited. You know, just above the ankle. <laughs> no, of Italy's boot. <laughs> is a region known as Abruzzi. Down south, Abruzzi. Their food is creative, robust, it's hearty, and just pure delicious. Abruzzi, if you don't know, is also along the coast, so influenced with a lot of seafood. We're going to show you how to do this linguine dish with seafood, with saffron, and a little broth. Tell you all about that in a second. And then also, it has the mountains. So it has the coast, it has the mountains, and they do a lot with lamb. I'm going to show you a fantastic lamb dish with balsamic vinegar and macaroni. That's fantastic. <laughs> And a very special guest who's not only a great, great actor, I've been a fan of this man's for a long, long time, but he's also a great cook, which is why he's here on Emerald Live, and that is Mr. Joe Montaigne is in the house. <laughs> the real deal. And I'm so happy, because not only is Joe in the house, Doc Gibbs in the Emerald Live Band. <laughs> Woo! So, if you don't mind, we're going to manja manja, a bruzy style, right here on Emerald Live. I'm so excited. How you, How doing? you doing? Nice to have you. Welcome. Hi. Thought these were the cheap seats, huh? <laughs> good to have you. A bruzy. Oh, goodness. Wonderful, wonderful ingredients, which is what makes great food. You have great ingredients, you got great cuisine. Olives, beautiful herbs, also known for the pasta, which is mostly dry in this area. And two of the largest pasta houses uh, are in this area known for their dry pasta. Cheeses, pork fat, beautiful thing. Like I said, olives and seafood. Joe, delighted to have you, my, my friend. My pleasure, thank nice you. Nice to be, uh, I'm my so wife, glad. Eileen. Great to have you Great guys. Pleasure. Thank you. And we have mutual friend. Yes, yes we, we do. do. Give her a big hug and a kiss for me. Yes, She's a special she, lady. She's she the best. Is. Absolutely, nice you. to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello there, folks, welcome. Welcome. All right. Let's get started. Good. It's the good part of, uh, of the show. To eat. Some boiling salted water. Going to put a little bit of olive oil. And begin with our wonderful linguine from Abruzzi. Inside we go. Let it start. Get it all in there. Start to sink, and we'll put the lid on it. Now, while that's happening, oh, that could have been your portion, Joe. <laughs> We're going to use some shrimp. We're going to use some mussels. But what I want to do first is I want to start extracting some white wine from the region. And people, this is... This dish, this linguine dish with seafood, in the bruzzi, you would not find it often, maybe in someone's home, saffron in this dish. If you went to a restaurant, you probably wouldn't find the saffron. But they are one of the great regions of Italy that actually grow saffron. So I'm going to have a pinch of saffron with this white wine and begin to extract that. I have some fish stock that I'm going to 
also add to this, once we, you're going to see what's going to happen with this saffron here. We're just extracting from the threads. You see how the water, the wine, excuse me, is beginning to get more yellow? Well, watch when this starts getting the flavor out of here, this wonderful flavor of the saffron. It's fantastic. Now, in this skillet, while the pasta is on, let's check on that. Somebody messing with my dials here. <laughs> Hate that. Don't be messing with my dials. All right, now we're getting it back here. Okay, so the pasta is beginning uh, to get right. Now, in this pot here, I'm going to take some good olive oil, which in this area, in Abruzzi, they have wonderful olive oil because they have great olive trees, years, olive trees that have been there for a long time. I'm going to start with some onion, a little bit of salt, just a little bit of fresh ground pepper. And the reason for that is, is because now, once the onion cooks for maybe about three minutes or so, I'm going to add crushed red pepper and some garlic. That's right. Now, what we're going to do, we'll let that cook a little bit. I have some mussels that we've cleaned. We've what they call bearded, which is we just cleaned the fuzzy uh, on the side, which is why they've sort of opened a bit like that. We just did that before we started the show. We're going to add the mussels. Again, a little bit more salt. Now we're going to add some love to these mussels. We're going to add a little bit of the fish stock. But now we're going to kick it up with that white wine and saffron, OK? Pasta's in. Muscles are getting happy. When we come back, another notch. Stick around. everybody. Kicking it up, a bruzy style. And our very, very special guest, Joe Montaigne in the house, his lovely wife, Arlene. And I got to get him something to eat. All right, look, here's what we're going to do before I start this next dish. You see the mussels? They're opening. They're happy. Oh, yeah, you can't. See, look. That's when muscles are happy, they do that. What we're gonna do now is one more step of happiness, a little salt and pepper on these wonderful shrimp. And we're just gonna put those in here. Just kind of let them, they gotta get happy too. They're not with the party yet. All right, they're not gonna take long, so that's why I'm adding them last. And then while those are sort of just doing their thing, I want to uh, explain, before I finish the pasta dish, there is a sort of vegetable casserole in this region. Uh, you grew up not far from there, right? My, uh, my, my family is from Sicily and Bari. So my mother's side, Bari's, is pretty close to Abruzzi, yeah. And now, very interesting enough, when we went to the market, Cardon. You ever seen that? Yeah, we call Gardoon? Yeah. Yeah, which is like, we, we, we pronounce it Gardoon, which is a slang probably of it, yeah. No, no, no. You know that now, it's, it, you can find it easily now in New York. We have some. And a lot of people don't, are not familiar with this stuff. Right. When I first went down to the market, Joe, 
the guy says to me, he says, well, I think that comes from the artichoke plant. <laughs> and he's almost correct, because it's a relative of the artichoke plant. But it's a very, it looks like celery almost. And they use this where it's kind of bitter. So what they do is they'll clean it up with all the, uh, the stems, and then they'll cut it in small pieces after they clean it like celery. And then they'll poach it in milk to get rid of some of the bitterness. And then they make this wonderful vegetable uh, casserole, is all I could say, that uh, we're going to do next. With that, we have also potato, tomato, zucchini, some roasted peppers that we roasted and took the skin off, onions. And this is the cardoon that's been blanched, like celery, like I said earlier. And uh, that milk eliminates some of the bitterness. All right, before I overcook the pasta, which I probably already did. Hey, get your own show. <laughs> oh, no, it's perfect. Yeah. The pasta timer just went. Well, let me tell you. A lot of people, for something so simple, still, we still receive so many of those WW dot things wondering why their pasta sticks together. I'm taking the pasta, the linguine, first. Now, if I didn't do anything to this, it would just be, basically, it would stick together because of the durum flour. So, to avoid that, first of all, we're going to just slightly season it. Salt, pepper. It has a little bit of salt still from the water, but then, this is when you want to take good extra virgin olive oil, okay? Just real simple, but that's the food of Italy. It's simplicity. And then we're just gonna lightly, don't go in there and like, it didn't do anything to you. Just <laughs> easy, just nice and gingerly like that so that the pasta doesn't become stuck together and it's seasoned with love. Little parsley. Now, in this region, in Abruzzi, they love things a little bit spicy with the red pepper or chilies. So we'll add a little bit of that. Then we're in there. Yeah, yeah. The shrimp, simply cooked. OK? Look, I'm not going to go in there and mess around. Let me just show you. This is like a family deal. Got some of the broth. Now we're going to get the mussels. Looks pretty good, huh? You should smell this. So who does the cooking at home? Mostly or she does. I See, at least say. you're an honest guy. You Absolutely. know, that's what I got to say. At no. least you're an honest guy. She's Czechoslovakian, but we've been married 26 years, and so she's had a lot of time to learn. It's fantastic. Italian. How's the new show? Great, great, very good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. I'm not putting you on the spot. Yes. That's just you and Arlene's portion. <laughs> I'll come back for the rest of the group, Joe, in a little bit, okay? All right, so let's start this casserole with vegetables. Yeah, you know this cheese. Yeah, scamozza. Scamozza. Three. Scamozza and pecorino and the vegetables. I'm going to start by the first layer. These potatoes I boiled whole till they were just about fork tender. Then we're going to layer. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, <laughs> olive oil. So I'm going to layer the potato. Then I'm going to season it, a little olive oil, crushed pepper, garlic, a little thyme. Then I'm going to add tomatoes. A little olive oil, crushed red pepper, garlic, a little thyme. Zucchini. And when we come back, Joe and I, another knot, stick around. <laughs> Thank you.
Giles, and Teddy. And of course, Dr. Gibbs. <laughs> Great friend Joe Montaigne in the house. Yeah. First Monday, right? On CBS. See, if, so we layer this thing of love, this vegetable thing of love, and the little pepper like I was telling you, okay? And then what we're going to do now is we finish this with more of that oil and the thyme. Definitely more garlic. Woo! And as I was saying, more crushed pepper. Now, 375, maybe 400, you could get away with about 40 minutes inside of the oven. And I know what you're saying at home, that we forgot the cheese, Joe. <laughs> but we didn't forget the cheese. We have the pecorino and... Scamosa. Scamosa. <laughs> This is kind of like a mozzarella. It's basically made the same way, okay? But really, really flavorful. After 40 minutes, we take it out, scamozza, pecorino cheese on top, and then maybe eight, 10 minutes in the oven, and this is what it's gonna look like with the cheese. See that? So 40 minutes, then the cheese, because you don't want to burn the cheese, especially the pecorino, OK? Now, you can eat this by itself. I think what we're going to do is let this sit a little bit, and we'll maybe serve it with our lamb, OK? So let me start on that. I got some more water here, plain water, that I'm going to add a little bit of salt and a little regular olive oil in there. This is this amazing, I was telling Joe and Arlene that we were in Rome and went up to Florence and there was this um, wonderful young Italian man trying to uh, get off and get a restaurant going in the square. And he was uh, made a lot of pasta. And I saw he had one of these, much older, of course. And uh, this is sort of a box that they make pasta. They call it a chitar, like a guitar, but a chitar. And they make wonderful pasta. I'm going to show you in a second. But as I was telling Joe, we sat and we were ready to order and the waitress came up in Florence and she says, yeah, what are you going to have? <laughs> well, she was from New York and she married the guy from Florence. But anyway, it's a, it was a great, it was a great lunch and a great story. So, <laughs> all right. I've got some flour that I'm going to season with a little bit of my essence here, just a little bit. So look at these lamb, just from the, from the shoulder, you see? Sort of a blade cut like that. The reason why they use these, especially in a bruzzi, they a lot, a lot of flavor because of the, the flank bone, et cetera. We're going to season them in a second. What we'll do is we'll start adding a little oil on them. And then what we'll do is we'll start dredging Got to season them with a little salt and pepper. And we'll dredge them in this seasoned flour. And add them in our skillet. Now, if you're ever doing this at home, and all of a sudden what you're starting to saute absorbs all of the oil, you don't have to, like, call 911. <laughs> you just add a little more oil. It's going to be all right. <laughs> so, dredge them in the flour. 
cook lamb, Joe? Yeah, I would love it. Me too. This is a really simple, but as you know, being in Italy, with just the crushed pepper, garlic, balsamic vinegar, very, very simple. Now, once I get the lamb in here, I'm gonna show you about this pasta. It makes it so special. You see, the pasta in the bruzzi is predominantly dry. And that's because not only the water from the river, but because they grow this durum wheat where they make the pasta. And the pasta with this water combination makes fantastic, fantastic dry pasta. With this type of machine, it's not really a machine, you have to get the, your sheets very, very thin, whether you roll them or you buy them. And then you just lightly, what I like to do is, I like to use just a little bit of flour like this. And then you get a little bit of this little rolling pin, you see, and you just sort of start on the strings. You can hear it too. And you keep rolling it and working it. See, this is pretty dry from a lot of the studio lights here, this thin pasta. But you see how it's starting to make these thin strips here like this? Purposely, the pasta is much more thicker than most. You see what it's making here, folks? And it goes through the box. And it's a wonderful, wonderful, dry, fresh, but kind of dry style pasta. Now, obviously, I'm not going to drop our pasta yet because our lamb is not even close. But while you get one of those frozen things, then I'll drop the pasta. And then Joe and I, another notch! <laughs> Stick around! joining us. Oh, cooking some food of a Brucey. Unbelievable. Including this lamb that I just turned over now. And now I want to, uh, ah, you're out of wine. <laughs> you know what this is? Montepulciano di yeah. Abruzzo. This is the wine from the region. Uh, light, dry. Let's see what you think. Look at the color on that. Like the land. Mm. Rich, hearty, rustic. <laughs> Salute. Salute. Cendale. <laughs> oh. Fantastic. That's going to be great with this. This is going to be great with this lamb. All right, folks, look. Brown on both sides. Watch what we're going to do now. We're going to add a little chopped onion. I told you about the olives from this region. We're going to add some beautiful olives. <laughs> Guys are right over there. <laughs> Watch out for that guy. This is the zest of lemon. And I told you earlier about the south, beginning in this region, working down, a lot of citrus. So a little peel of lemon. We're gonna add a little thyme. And not as traditional, Joe, but 
I think we add a little rosemary too. Just a little bit of rosemary that will just mm. kick it up a little like that. Woo. Oh yeah, there. Now I'm gonna add my pasta. Fresh. It's not gonna take as long now. And I'm gonna show you something that they do with this simple pasta. Any kind of pasta in this region, I'm gonna show you a little technique that they do. Now, first, balsamic vinegar. What's going to happen when you use balsamic vinegar like this? As it evaporates, it concentrates in flavor. OK? If we were to use an older balsamic, and believe me, they got some old balsamics. If you use older, it would be sweeter. So it would cut a little bit more into the lamb. So what we're going to do to mellow some of that is use a little bit of the wine from the region. Not too much. Because <laughs> we got to drink the rest. Now, we're going to let that simmer. Our pasta is just about done. Now is when we want to start. Good olive oil from the region in a skillet. This is traditional how this pasta is done like this. OK? Crushed red pepper and fresh garlic. Yeah. A little bit of salt. Now, you don't want to burn the garlic, so that's why I said you want to time your fresh pasta just right. OK? You don't want to burn the garlic. I'm going to show you one second. OK, you see that now? We're going to just take the excess water, and we're going to put the fresh pasta right inside of there. Then we're going to add more good olive oil, little salt, bam, bam, just a little bit like that. Then for me, a little shake like that. I don't want to break the pasta up. We're just getting the food of love, the flavors going in there. Then, pasta. For me, because of the sauce, a little more olive oil. Yeah. See, I'm from the school that you can drink olive oil. <laughs> the lamb. Rustic. Oh. The sauce. Look at how dark and rich that is. You see that? Just a little bit. Little parsley. There you have it, folks. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you. When we come back, more cuisine of a bruzy. Stick around. Watch it. Emerald Live Band. 
Cliff, Charles, and Teddy. All right, I know you, you're kind of just saying, what uh -huh. happened to that? He's punishing me. Yeah. So there's the uh, the lamb. Maestro. With the... Uh, Maestro. Oh, thank you. With the pasta. And then I want to give you a taste of this uh, this vegetable with the potato. Because it's just cooled enough now to let it sit. Doesn't that look good, folks? Mm. Oh. <laughs> just put a little bit of parsley in there. Right. Try that. Thank you. Anybody have heard of bocconotti? It's a dumpling that uh, is sweet. Wonderful mm. dessert. Okay. Like that. And that's what we're going to make right now. I'm going to show you how to make the pastry, and then the filling, and then how you cut them kind of reminds you of ravioli. First, the pastry. Regular flour and some sugar. Yeah, it's kind of a little sweeter than, than most doughs. Pinch of salt. And then we take the cube butter in little cubes because we have to work it inside of this, which I'll show you right now. So first, let me mix the sugar and the salt in there. And then you can do this with uh, a pie whisk. I, I just find it to be easier, just a little bit working it with your hands. First of all, before you start squishing the butter into the flour, you want to, I feel that if you properly can coat it first, it's a lot easier to work it in there. Even if you're just doing this making regular pie dough, I find that if you put the lot, you know, the lot or the shortening or the butter in one piece, it's a lot easier to work it instead of breaking it up in small pieces. And then you can just sort of with your fingers like I'm doing here, kind of work the, the butter into that. Now, while I'm doing that, let me tell you about some other ingredients that are going to go inside of this pastry. A couple of eggs, no water, no liquid other than the eggs. The same thing with most of their pastas, no water, no liquid, it's mostly eggs. That's why the eggs and the durum flour that they use, why the pasta looks so yellow, so rich in color, the best. Now what we're going to use is some cinnamon. And again, as Joe and I were talking about during the break, a little lemon zest, and a little bit of vanilla. And that's going to be all inside of the pastry, or the dough, if you will. So now, once we work it into where the flour and the butter, which is going to give it the richness, is worked in there, now what we're going to do is we're going to add the eggs, a couple of eggs, and we're going to start working the eggs now. Once we get the eggs broken, as I just done that, we're going to add the cinnamon. Now, look, you don't have to add at all or a lot of cinnamon. People get a little freaked out of too much cinnamon or too much nutmeg. So, look, I'm just going to add a little bit halfway, but I am going to add all the lemon zest, and I'm going to add all the vanilla. So that's, that's the dough. You want to work it. And try not to overwork it. You don't want to have, whether you're making pasta, tough pasta, or tough bread, or tough pastry dough. So you just want to work it until it forms into a little ball. Now, what I do is once it forms into a little ball, I like to do this the day before, wrap it in plastic wrap, keep it in the ice box. And then what I like to do is take it out and roll it Okay, and roll it in on a little light flour surface. And then you kind of treat it just like a ravioli. Let me show you real quick. First, before we do that, let me show you about the filling. We got ricotta cheese and um, candied fruit. Okay, you can see this is the pure kind. It's not that, you know what I'm talking about, the kind that you wonder 
Where did this come from? That's a mighty fine green color you got there. Some sugar. Again, a little lemon zest. And just a couple of egg yolks for richness. And that's what the filling's going to be. So we're going to work this ricotta cheese filling in with the candied fruits. Now, you can take your dough out about a half hour before, roll it out thin like you're going to make a pasta sheet or a pie crust, like I have here. I'm going to use a little flour. You roll it out. And then what we do is we treat it just like, see, it's very, very fragile kind of dough, so you don't want to mess around with it too much. But what I do very simply is this. I just take the filling and I sort of go down the center. Kind of just go down the center with the filling. And then what I do is I just fold it, fold it over, just like if I'm going to make ravioli. I just kind of fold it over as much as I can, you see? And then what I do is I just sort of crimp the dough, flatten it, and then either with a pastry wheel or a knife, we'll just sort of even them up. And as big as you want them, you just kind of make and then seal these wonderful ravioli kind of shapes, okay? Well, oh, wait, wait till, you, wait till you see what we're gonna do with them. And I'll show you that when we come back. Stick around, the food of abusing! <laughs> to the uh, mountains right here. Some great food here. And uh, I want to show you, before I show you how to cook these things, another alternative way of making them. I laid the filling out. Again, you could add a few drops of rum to that as well, or any liqueur you want. You can also do it the traditional ravioli style, whether you have ravioli mold or not. And that is, is by spotting the dough, brushing it with an egg wash, and people feel a lot more comfortable doing this than using a cutter. And then getting uh, the other shape and then actually taking the dough over and then sort of shaping them just like ravioli is the other way that you can do that. Whether it's round or square, a lot of people feel a lot more comfortable doing it this way here. Just kind of shaping it up. And then you have this wonderful pastry. Now, I have seen them fried, but not often. Although I bet you they'd be good fried. <laughs> but generally what they do is in about a 350, 400 degree oven, when you're ready, the great thing is, is you put some plastic wrap over them and basically, uh, you can really just sort of keep them in the ice box, even for a day. And then when you're ready, I just keep it simple. That sort of seems to be the, the love in Italy anyhow, no matter what region, just keep it simple. So, a little, maybe a little powdered sugar you'd see in some places. A little beautiful mint and even more of that lemon zest, or what I like is this wonderful candied lemon that they do. I just sort of use a little bit of that, and you can even julienne it up a little bit more. Joe, that's for you. Abu Danza. It's fantastic having you both. My pleasure. My friend, 
Thanks. Thank God you. bless you, your new show. Thank you. And uh, your family, come back and see us we anytime. Will. Thank you.